guys. Thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, I'm History Hound. I'm a metal detectorist and a lover of history. This series of videos is going to be based on a metal detecting find I made a couple years ago in the mountains of western North Carolina. It was a Confederate D-Guard Bowie knife handle. And the blade was missing, but the handle, the wood, and the iron D-Guard, they were still there. But you can imagine, after years of being buried in the dirt, they were pretty fragile. Typically, with an old historic find, I'm satisfied with just a light cleaning. That's about all I want to do to something. But this piece was a little different, and I realized that it was just going to continue to deteriorate. So I decided to pull the trigger and do something that I rarely do. I'm going to deconstruct and then reconstruct this Confederate Bowie knife. Now, the Bowie knife played an important part in the American Civil War, especially for the Confederacy. It was very common for Confederate troops to have to arm themselves. They didn't have swords and things like that issued. And so many of them turned to the local blacksmith to make these Bowie knives. Now, it has been said about the Bowie knife that it was long enough to use as a sword, wide enough to use as a paddle, sharp enough to use as a razor, and heavy enough to use as a hatchet. So it was a pretty handy tool to have attached to your belt. But by the end of the Civil War, the Bowie knife was on the decline. The bayonet had kind of started to take its place, and people just weren't carrying these large, heavy knives around as much as what they once did. And the Bowie knife kind of faded from existence, for the most part, after about 1865. I think it's a pretty important little piece of history, and I'd like to do my part to try to preserve it, at least to have something to show to people and teach them a little bit about the past. So that's the journey that we're going to go on. Now, what are the goals for this journey? Preservation first and foremost. Really the only intact part of this knife is the iron guard itself. I want to preserve that, but it's pretty fragile. So that may means in, mean in the reconstruction of this knife, we have to go about things a little differently than what they did when it was originally assembled. We have to be gentle. I also want to get this knife as back to as close to original as I possibly can get it. Now, the blade is missing, so we're going to have to do a little guessing as to its shape, but I think the guard itself offers us a few clues to help us out there. I need to identify the wood that is left on the handle because I want to use the exact same type of wood, if possible, to replace the new handle. So if you are interested in coming along on this journey, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button. Also hit the notification bell. These videos in this series aren't going to be coming real fast and furious. It's going to take a little time to get this done. So if you don't want to miss out and you want to see this thing in its completion, make sure and hit subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, I'm going to show you the video of the day that I found this old knife handle. And then we're going to jump right in to the deconstruction. I'm going to have a few hurdles along the way. In fact, at the end of this video, I've already reached a little bit of an impasse and I'm not quite sure what to do. Maybe some of you have some ideas that can help me out. Found something I did not ever expect to find, I think. All right, you see all this disturbed dirt? That's not me. Those are hogs. And they have gone all through here. I'm walking along, getting a lot of big iron like that and I look down on top of the ground and I see that now call me crazy is that not a sword handle oh my gosh oh wow All right guys, so here is the D-Guard. 
and you can see this is what's coming off of it. The wood actually feels a little bit solid inside here, a little bit more solid, just the outside. And I also did soak some super glue into several of these crevices, trying to keep it together at one point. And so I'm sure some of that soaked in and hardened some things up. The guard itself, pretty rough. It's gonna take some electrolysis. It's got some pretty good sized pitting in several places. I was thinking this might have been brass, but um, I'm thinking it's not now. And it is cracked. So may not be able to save that piece either. All right, I am just gonna get into this and start removing the wood. I expect there to be a tang running through here. You can see where it is peened over on the end coming through this side of the guard. And we're gonna have to see about getting that off as well. Let's just hope I don't break it. All right, just a little ways into it and that piece right there broke off. I suspect this whole thing right here is gonna break, but it's not brass. There is a nail going through the top of it to kind of secure that. So that part right there will have to be refashioned. This is getting more solid as I go down, but you can see the tang a little bit right in there. All right, there's the tang. Looks like a good quarter inch thick blade. I would love to try to save that, but it's uh, it just it's so thin, and uh, it was cracked all the way through when we dug it up. And it's just not going to hold up. So I'm going to take that off next. And get the rest of the wood off the tank. Alright, got this piece off. And what I was thinking was some sort of little uh, brad on top there is not. It's just a little rust nodule. We'll keep that for dimensions for replacing it. All right, that's coming off next. One of the questions that I did have, I was kind of curious to see how they got the hole through the center of that handle. And, uh, you know, I guess that was just drilled circular and then uh, filed, some sort of a square file to, to fit the uh, tang there. come in handy when I get ready to make a new handle for it. So this is as far as I can take it to this point and here's what I'm concerned about. Getting that out of there without breaking the tip of the guard off. And uh, I'm thinking maybe I should do electrolysis on the whole thing or you know just cut it off a little bit short. I don't want this waving around, wiggling around too much and putting a lot of stress on that point right there. But I think we need to do some electrolysis and rust removal and see if we can strengthen this metal just a little bit more. But um, there you have it. change of plan here is what I'm thinking I'm gonna do now see that huge 
gouge right there in the bottom. That is easily two thirds through the metal. And it's got that black rust on the inside. And I'm concerned that if we do electrolysis on that, there's a possibility we get a complete break right there. Because it's going to eat that black rust too. Also, pitting, a deep pitting right there. So, I think what I need to do, I've got a file. I think I'm just going to start working these off and just try to work it down. I don't want to take this down to, you know, bare metal because there's places there's not enough of it, but get these nodules off pretty flush and then treat this chemically to just stop what rust is there. Maybe darken the color a little bit. File or saw this off. And I've already started filing right here on this pin. So I'm gonna file that pin off down to the guard. And then if I have to drill that out, we'll get that worked out one way or the other. I just don't wanna put a ton of pressure on that. So I think maybe electrolysis is out on this one. That is just way too much metal missing on that one corner. I'm afraid that it might just eat all the way through. It's possible that that right there is already a hole. Once I clear that off this side, that it's already all the way through. So electrolysis would open that all the way up. All right, I'll continue on, show you as I get a little bit more down the road with it. All right, well, that has gotten rid of the little rust nodules. Now I just got to figure out what I want to soak that in or treat that with. And uh, maybe it'll also help me with that removal on that end there. I've stopped filing for right now. I think I want to treat it first and see, see what happens. But you can see lots of pitting there. Definitely not going to be something that I'll be taking into battle anytime soon, but maybe it will look nice hanging on a wall. A lot better than what it did, anyhow. All right, as you can see, I decided to keep pressing on, and I went ahead and filed. Got through that pretty easily. Been working on that pin on the end, though, and that's going to be tricky right there. Don't know that that would ever break loose on its own. So we may have to drill that out. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. It looks circular to me anyway. Even though well, it probably wasn't that tang is squared off all the way down its length. It's hard to tell with all that rust. Mm -hmm. All right, that's the next part of the process. All right, so that is where I'm gonna leave you guys this time. Here's a question for you. How would you go about removing that little bit of tang that's left stuck inside of the guard? Maybe drilling is the least damaging method of pulling that out? I don't know. Maybe there's something I could soak that in that might free that up. Tell me what you think. We learned a few things, um, not necessarily in the video, but afterwards I've learned a few things. That little piece of metal towards the front of the handle that fell off is indeed brass. So we'll be replacing that. Also identified the wood that the handle was made from. I kept thinking, man, this looks like walnut to me. After doing a little research, I found out that indeed walnut was a very popular handle for these Bowie knives. So we'll be replacing the handle with a piece of walnut. Now, as far as how we go about reconstructing, I've thought a little bit about this. 
that guard isn't going to take any sort of a beating. So when we put the wood handle back on, even though this original handle had a really solid tight fit to the tang of the knife, I suspect that that was that tight because it took a little bit of beating to get it in there. Maybe they even heated the tang really hot and then slid it into a, you know, that wooden handle. Don't know how they got it that tight. Other than that, they are very good. I do know I don't have that luxury. So my fit is going to have to be a little bit looser than what the original was. And I'm thinking we're going to be using some sort of an epoxy to help us out there. We need to be able to put the wood handle in between the two edges of the guard with a hole drilled through the center and then easily slide that knife blade through the guard, through the handle, and out the back of the guard. And I think we're going to use epoxy on the inside to really kind of secure the handle and the tang together. It's not going to be a knife that I'm going to be hacking on stuff with. So it's going to be a wall hanger. It's okay. Also, the peen at the end of the tang where it protrudes out of the guard, that was heated and then pounded over to secure the blade inside of the guard. We don't have that luxury. Cannot be pounding on this thing. So I'm thinking we may have to put a little bit of a weld at the end and then file it down to make it look like a peen. Let me know what you think about that as well. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. The next video in this series.